Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'd like to demonstrate the power of masking an On One Photo Raw 2024 by editing an image from start to finish using only masking in On One Photo Raw 2024. The reason why I'm doing this video is I was recently asked by On One Software to do an entire course on masking. That course is currently available. It's called Mastery Masking in On One Photo Raw 2024. Now in today's video, I'm just scratching the surface on what you could do with masks in On One Photo Raw 2024. In this course, I explain and demonstrate everything about masking in On One Photo Raw 2024 and teach you how to use all the different types of masks found in the application. There's 14 videos, tons of tons of information, and beyond the videos, you also get 20 AI adaptive presets that I created for the course. These are unique presets that aren't available anywhere else. They're not uh, the same presets I sell on my website. You also get all of the images I use in the videos so you could work along at home. And I created a PDF outline for each of the videos. So you can watch a video and then if you need to refer back to something I covered in a video, you could just refer back to the PDF outline. Now the course is currently available, as I mentioned, directly from On One Software. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Also, I'd like to mention very quickly that on my website, anthonymorganti.com, I have some free keyboard shortcuts, including keyboard shortcuts for On One Photo Raw. They're downloadable PDFs that you could print at home. And in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website, you can see right at the top, I have keyboard shortcuts for free. You could click there and download all of the keyboard shortcuts that you'd like. Now, back to today's video. I'd like to edit this image, but I just want to demonstrate the power of masking in On One Photo Raw 2024 by only using masks. Well, mainly only using masks. This is a totally unedited raw file, and I am going to do some lens correction, so I am going to turn that on. Now, typically what you would probably do uh, at this point is you would go to tone and color and you'd start doing global adjustments. Masking allows you to mask a specific part of the image and only apply adjustments to that specific part. Now, to do masking in On One Photo Raw 2024, there's several different ways to go about doing it and there's several different types of masks, hence why I did the course for On One. I'm going to start out though by doing some local masks to this image. So I'm going to go over to the local tab and I'm going to click add an adjustment. And when you do that, the masking properties dialog box will come up. And at the very top, you'll see there's a little drop down that's labeled mask AI. This is where the magic is. Uh, when you go to this drop down, you'll notice that there's several different radio buttons, they call these. And if I hover over something, you'll see a red overlay appear over each of the things I hover over. So you see there was architecture, flora, natural ground, water, sky. That's where the mask will be applied. So for this first mask, I want to do some adjustments to the sky. So I'm going to click that on. And then you'll see when I click it on, we get a blue overlay. Now I want to make sure that I'm painting in the adjustment. So I'm applying the adjustment and then I'm going to click apply. Now, once you do that, you could close down this masking properties dialog box and you'll notice that it looks pretty dark. That's because just kind of, to kind of remind you that you have applied a mask. What on one does, it just brings exposure down to minus one. Uh, so to reset this, just double click on the word exposure. So you could reset any slider by just double clicking on the label. Now, if you do want to see the mask over at the very bottom, there's a little mask icon here. You could click there to turn it on. Now there's different types of overlays. If we go to this little drop down, you can see that there's just a red overlay. There's a red overlay uh, brushing. That means you won't see the red until you start brushing. And then there's grayscale. I'll just show you grayscale real quick. Now I'm going to go to the red overlay. Now this actually kind of works opposite of what I'm used to in that the part that is being masked doesn't have the overlay on it. Typically with other applications, uh, the part that is being masked has the red overlay on it. So this is a little bit um, backwards 
maybe from what I'm used to, but it's easy enough to get used to. Now you'll notice that it did kind of like miss some of these clouds up in here, but whenever you do apply a mask, you'll get a masking brush. You can see I automatically have this brush. And if you go hover up over here towards the top left-hand side, you can see you have some brush settings. And typically, I want to erase the brush, and I do not want to use a perfect brush, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, and I cover that intensively in the course. But I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to do is erase, um, well, I want to actually paint the mask in, in the areas where it just kind of missed those clouds. So I'll get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And that's where I came in, where I initially uh, had a race, is because I always get the overlay backwards in my mind. It does take you a second to get used to it. So you could come in here and just make sure that you have the sky selected uh, the way you want. Now I can come down here and I could turn off the mask overlay by clicking right there. And I want to do my actual adjustment. So what I typically do is I do tone first. And I'll go and I'll look at the brightest parts, like in here of these clouds. And I'll take highlights down until I see some detail come into there. Then I go to the darkest parts, and there really aren't any dark parts. But typically, then I would jump down. I'd skip midtones at this point, and I jump down to shadows, and I'd open up shadows a little bit. In this case, I just want to open up shadows till I get a, cle a pleasing blue. Then what I'm going to do is get a white point. And the way I get a white point is I hold in the J key while I'm adjusting the white slider, and I move it to the right. And if I go too far, you'll start to see a red overlay come in. This is while holding in the J key. If I let go of the J key, you won't see it. That red overlay means I'm blowing out the highlights. And you don't want to do that typically because if you print that, no ink will be put down in that area. So I'll back that area up or back the slider up so that that red completely dissipates and leave it right at that point. I'll do the same thing for black. So I'll hold in the J key and I'll move this black slider to the left. Now, if there were any real dark areas up there, I'd get a blue overlay if I went too far. So I'm going to take blacks all the way down. Now, after I, hi I adjust highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, I'll go back to midtones and I'll just adjust this visually so that it looks good. In this case, I'm taking it down. I think that looks pretty good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some structure by moving the structure slider to the right. A uh, haze. If you move it to the right, you're adding haze. If you move it to the left, you're removing haze. I'm going to remove a little haze. Uh, if you've ever been to Niagara Falls, there's mist in the air pretty much everywhere you go. So most of your images come out looking a little hazy. It's just from the mist from the falls. So I'm moving that to the left. Not going to add or remove any noise. Not needed. I'm going to go to saturation though and tweak up saturation a little bit. So there is my adjustment that I've done for the sky. I haven't touched anywhere else in the image. I've just adjusted the sky. All right, let's rename this so we remember it. So we just double click on the name adjustment and then we could come in here and I could just call the sky. So now I know that this local adjustment is for the sky. Now we're going to go to this drop down again and we're going to add a new mask. And this time I want to do something with the cliffs and the, um, the actual trees. So we'll come down here and we'll click on flora, but it didn't get all the flora, but there is natural ground. So we'll click on that. Now there is a mountain uh, option. We'll click on that. So you can see I'm adding to it. I have most of the cliff and most of the trees selected, but it didn't select some of the trees off in the distance and some of the cliff down here at the bottom right hand side. So I could add to it. We want to make sure we're painting in, click apply. We'll get rid of this. We'll come up here. We'll make sure that we're painting or adding to the selection. I am going to turn on the mask so we could see. And if you'd like to see a uh, red overlay while brushing, then you could see it. Only when you click with the left mouse button will you see that red overlay. Typically, I, I prefer to just have the red overlay like that. And then I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the right bracket key. And I'll come in here and get the rest of this cliff over in here. And I'm not going to, uh, excuse me, I'm not going to go uh, very precisely here because we're doing the video. I'm just going to try to go as quickly as possible. So we'll go over in here. I will show you the perfect brush though in a second. So we'll come in here like this. So make sure we get all this kind of 
tree area off in the background. I'm not going to worry about between the parts of the um, actual bridge. But right in here, I want to make sure I don't touch the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the perfect brush. And when you do, you'll get this dialog box explaining what the per perfect brush does. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and what the perfect brush is, is wherever that little center like plus sign is, when you click with the left mouse button, it will examine the tone, texture, and color directly under that. And it will try to only apply the brush to similar tone, texture, and color. And you can see that even though the brush is bleeding off into the sky, it's not affecting the sky at all. So you could see you could go like that. You could come in here and do these probably like this in between here if I wanted to. But I'm not going to get too crazy about in between the bridge. I think that's good enough for this demonstration. We'll turn off the mask overlay. And again, it brings exposure down a little bit. Uh, remember that. So I just want to brighten this up. As a matter of fact, I think we'll reset that. I want to add some contrast actually to the um, to that area. We'll add some structure. And then we're going to go down and add saturation like that. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to rename this. I'm going to double click on the name and I'm going to call this Flora, even though it has the cliffs, but I know what it means. Now we're going to add one more local adjustment. I want to do something with that water. So we'll go to adjustment. We'll go to the region and we're going to go to water. And it looks like it selected the water pretty good. Maybe got a little bit of the cliffs, but I'm not really too worried about it. So we'll go to again water. Turn that on. Make sure we're painting in. Click apply. Close this down. Now again, it will take exposure down a little bit. You don't really want that typically. We'll add some contrast though. And I think what I'll do is I'll go to the whites and I'll make the whites a little brighter and I'll make the darks a little darker. So I'm adding some contrast this way as well. And we're going to go to saturation and add a little saturation. So three masks. We'll rename this one water. Oops. Right. Now three masks. And this is before. I'm sorry. This is before. And this is after. And this is before. And this is after. So, so far so good. Not quite done yet though. I want to go to effects. And I want to mess around with the sky a little more. So I'm going to add a filter. And specifically, I want to add a dynamic contrast filter, but I want to add it to the sky only. And you could see over here on the left-hand side, we could apply it to specific parts of the image. I want to add it to the sky, dynamic contrast, and we're going to come in and just add some dynamic contrast to that sky. Now, I'd also like to add dynamic contrast to the flora, but I don't want to go back in and paint in and add all that additions I did to the flora. So what I could do is I could go back to the local tab, go to my flora adjustment, click on the actual mask right here, and it will bring up the masking properties. And I could go to this little icon right here and click there and copy this mask to the clipboard. Now, once it's copied to the clipboard, I could go back to effects. I could go to add filter. I could go to dynamic contrast. Now, right now, dynamic contrast is global. It's affecting everywhere in the image. But I could click on the little mask icon and I could click this little paste icon right here. And when I do that, it will actually paste the mask from my Flora local adjustment so that I could then, it will all, you could see how it's only affecting the cliffs, the trees, and so on. And I think we're going to add some vibrance as well. And there's before and there's after all done with masks. Now I'm going to add one local or one effect that isn't going to be mask and that's a vignette. Typically I like to finish off my images with a vignette. So we'll just go to a vignette and let's see what big softy looks like. And let's say I just like that and we'll go with that. Now I could drag these around if I don't like the order, just, just, click on it and I could drag it up to the top like that. And that's it. So there's before and there's after. I did all of my editing on this image using masks outside of that vignette.
And again, uh, I just scratched the surface on what you could do with masking in On One Photo Raw 2024. There's all different types of masks. Uh, there's, and I cover this in this video, uh, there's the masking bug, there's quick mask, there's line masks. You could refine the mask uh, using a chisel. You could refine it. And I cover all of this in the course that I did for On One Software. Now they call this a photo kit. It's a, really a course. And again, I'll have this linked in the description below this video, and I'll have a link to my website where you could grab uh, the keyboard shortcuts for any type of application you happen to use that I have a keyboard shortcut. You're welcome to grab them from here. That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.